Welcome, everybody. It's uh, time again. Matt Connerton unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in uh, downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. And we have a guest uh, who's going to be calling in in uh, just a moment. This, uh, I believe this is him. Mike, is that you? Hey, this is me, buddy. Alderman hey, Mike listen, Lopez. I got a couple of people here. Yeah. Uh, Want to talk about a very good program. How much time do I have? Uh, you, I can, we can do 10, 15 minutes. Five, five, 10 minutes. Okay. That'd be fine. Yeah. What, whatever uh, works for I'm, you. Yeah. I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the chairman, uh, of Boy State, uh, Alex Hemlin on the, on the speaker phone here. Oh, sure. And then he'll introduce uh, girl state, uh, president. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> well, Hey, good afternoon. Thanks so much for having me. Um, my name is Alex Henlon, and Mike is uh, a fantastic friend who got us all together. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, um, thank you. I I have the privilege of being chairman of American Legion Boys State in New Hampshire this year. And I just wanted to take 60 seconds to encourage parents, educators, students in high school, um, anyone really who knows someone who is in the junior or senior class to consider inviting their talented relative or friend or acquaintance to consider Boy State and Girl State this summer. It's a program that works and teaches about American government, but it's a lot about individual leadership and the importance of participating in civic life. Um, there are a lot of details about how to apply, what to do. There's a website, nhboysstate, all one word, dot org, B-O-Y-S-S-T-A-T-E, dot org. Um, our program is going to run six days in person this summer at St. Anselm's College here in Manchester from June 20th through June 25th. The only cost to a student to attend is the application fee. It's $25 for Boys State. It's $50 for Girls State. If a student wants to attend and can't afford that, please apply and let us know. We'll be glad to consider the case and the situation. Um, But it's a great program. It's got a lot of opportunity. It's got some fantastic scholarship opportunities, and uh, I just hope that anyone in the junior or senior class in high school this year who wants to experience this can come and join us. If they want to know what the programs are all about, take a look at the Boy State documentary on Apple TV+. Plus. Take a look at the preview of it, which is on YouTube, and get a flavor for what we can do. Um, but again, nhboysstate.org, there's all kinds of details with full instructions, get some money, get some good application materials for college, um, and get to know why it's important to be an engaged citizen. Uh, and, and again, thanks so much for having me on. I'm going to hand it over to Joyce Flanders to talk for a minute or two just about Girl State, and then we'll let you carry on with the day. (laughs) All right. right. Thanks, Alex. Nice to hear from you. All right. Hi, I'm Joyce Flanders, and I'm a past state president for the American Legion Auxiliary. Hi, Joyce. I am also. I have also been a girl state chairman for two years, and but I've been associated with the program for about 25 years. Um, please, please, if you are a senior or a junior that wants to have a unique experience. Please apply. Our website is ALA Girls State at WordPress.com. So please go onto that website, make out the application, and if you can't find a post or unit in your area, send it to the office, which the number is and the address is on the application. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Oh, absolutely, Joyce. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, if you want to go to that Apple TV Boy State, uh, 
it's a great program you can run uh, along and give us some advertising. How many times are you going to play it? About 10 times between now and the end of the month? <laughs> I'll tell All you right, what, I, I, that uh, that documentary is supposed to be really good. But by the way, Mike. Um, yeah, have you seen that documentary? I haven't seen it, but I remember reading about it, and uh, and then I, I hadn't gotten around to watching it, but this reminds me about it. But, yeah, it's uh, from what I understand, it's excellent. Um, and, Mike, I want you to know, Stefan Philbrook in the Facebook live chat uh, says that um, his son Lydon Philbrook did Boys State and was sponsored by you, Mike. Uh, and uh, that you, oh. that uh, and he says that uh, Lydon always speaks highly of the program and says it was life-changing for him. Yeah, it is a life-changing thing, and uh, if, if you could uh, look at that Apple thing and pull it up and, and, and talk about it, uh, we'd surely appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, very good. All right. Very good. Well, uh, very good. Well, thank, th- thank you all three, and and I look forward to to when the pandemic is over. We, you know, we can we can reconnect uh, in person. <laughs> yeah, when it's over there, we'll come in the studio. We'll get all there. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, all three of you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. All right. Bye, bye. All right. That was uh, the great Mike Lopez. Uh, Lo- I, I'm not sure if he's is he currently an alderman. Uh, he has been an alderman. He's very well known, of course, uh, locally here in Manchester. Uh, John Hopwood uh, calls him uh, Mr. Veteran because Mike, well, Mike is a veteran, and he's also um, he's done a, a great deal for veterans' issues uh, uh, here uh, here in uh, Manchester and in the state of New Hampshire. So, uh, so uh, that was uh, that was really nice. And uh, they were, but it was a little it was a little surreal. It was a little awkward because <laughs> they they the, the three of them were out in the hallway. Um, calling into the show and, uh, the reason for that. So it was like, I could actually hear them in the hallway on the other side of the door as I'm hearing them in the headphones. But the reason, the, the reason for that was, um, you know, I, I, I talked to, to Mike, uh, yesterday and he was asking because they were in the building to do a, a television show upstairs on channel 23. Actually, I think they were guest hosting John Hopwood's show, Ward 13. And, and so, you know, I talked to Mike yesterday, he was asking about, you know, if they could pop in for a few minutes, uh, to talk about boy state and girl state. And, um, I said, well, (laughs) right now, uh, I'm not having live guests. You know, we're really keeping a tight bubble basically within the household and within the station. So, uh, we can do a phoner, you know, once, once Jenny and I are fully vaccinated, we're going to, uh, reevaluate and reassess the, uh, the rules. But, um, for right now, you know, I'm, I'm not booking any in studio guests, but you're welcome to call in. So, but it, it was just kind of funny because <laughs> they're, you know, each, each person, Mike and, and, uh, Joyce and Alex, you know, the, each of them was looking in the window in the door. So that it's like, so they're talking to me directly through the glass as they're talking on the phone. It was just kind of, it was, uh, it was a little trippy, but, uh, no, but I, I, you know, I appreciate their understanding about, uh, you know, not having in-studio guests, uh, during my show. Everyone's been super cool about it and really respectful. Nobody's given me a hard time or, or asked me to make an exception or anything. So, which is really nice. But, uh, anyway, so here we are, uh, Matt Connerton unleashed. Oh, and by the way, um, that, that documentary, what is it called? I guess it's just called Boys State, but I, yeah, and it's on Apple TV. I've never seen it, uh, but I remember reading about it, that it's actually really good. Um, Yeah, according to Wikipedia, it's a 2020 American documentary film directed and produced by Jesse Moss and Amanda McBain. Uh, It follows a thousand teenage boys attending Boys uh, slash Girl State in Texas coming to build a representative government from the ground up. I think it might have been in Rolling Stone that I read that. But anyway, um, it's, yeah, it's supposed to be really good. So, you know, maybe I'll, and there's a, a trailer if you want to see the trailer. But, um, but yeah, very interesting. And and actually, and what I was reading about it was that, you know, they, you you really kind of learn if, if you, uh, if you go through the process. And like I said, uh, Stefan, you know, his son lied and, did boy state and um you really kind of learn about how government works uh the processes and the politics of it and 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 how cutthroat it can be <laughs> so you might even come away you might come away from it feeling great you might come away from it feeling cynical i don't know but but you'll but you'll uh, come away from it or your your kids will uh I, perhaps i should say come away from it uh learning a lot 
Um, so it sounds like a, a great experience. And, you know, Stefan says Lydon had a great experience, too. So I've, I think I've only met Lydon once, but he was a very, very impressive young man. I met Lydon when uh, Stefan had brought Lydon to our primary coverage when we were covering the New Hampshire primary uh, up the street at the uh, Radisson. Was it even the Radisson at the time, or was it in that weird transition between whatever it was before? Anyway, um, we were doing our uh, our coverage of the New Hampshire primary, uh, so it was Peter White and I. I think Daryl had left at that point. It was Peter and I and Stefan and his son Lydon. And, uh, yes, very impressive young man. Stefan is very impressive, too. You know, Jenny and I had dinner with him once, and uh, what a fascinating guy. But uh, and we love the Philbrooks and they're very supportive of of all the shows here at WMNH and of the station. So anyway, but uh, that does open up a line for you. 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. Uh, you can also text us at 617-917-4476. Uh, tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to Matt at mattconnerton.com. And of course, you can. Get at me. I think the young people say that now. They say, get at me uh, through all the, uh, you know, any of the social media channels, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. You know, I have a fairly unusual last name, so it's easy to find me. There is another Matt Connerton, though, in the state of New Hampshire, but he's my uncle, so I don't know if that counts. He's uh, like me, but 20 years older or 30 years older, however, I don't know what it's like, 25 years older. Anyway, doesn't matter. But uh, but please reach out. The best thing to do, though, of course, is to call us live on the air, 603-250-6007. But you can, of course, interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. We'll say hello to everybody in there. I uh, see uh, Brian Mackey all the way from Idaho is in the chat. and says, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Wayne Noel is a top fan all the way from Michigan, says, afternoon and happy hump day, everyone. Uh, Steph and I did mention he's a top fan and he's in the uh the Facebook live chat, uh, talking about how Lydon uh, described uh, the Boy State program as being life-changing for him. Uh, Stefan also says that Lydon got elected to the executive council, the blue shirt. Uh, he will be reaching out uh, to a few Central High students. Oh, very nice. Hey, you know, uh, by the way, you know, if, if Lydon would like to call into the show and talk about his experience at Boy State, uh, that would be uh, that would be very cool to talk to him. Uh, Eric Street is a top fan and is in the Facebook live chat and says, good afternoon. Um, Rob Dion in the chat, I think he had said something about the maskless uh, guests in the hallway on the phone. Well, that's why they weren't in here. Um <laughs> He says, uh, I deleted my comments. I just don't understand why people can't be more careful and more courteous when around others in public spaces. Nothing personal. Uh, indeed, a great program referring to Boy State. Yeah, you know, uh, Jenny and I, I, I think I'd mentioned this on the show before. We had an encounter with uh, somebody in the building here who does a television show upstairs. And, uh, you know, this uh, particular individual was who will remain nameless and does remain nameless uh, on this uh, particular program. Uh, I don't mention his name, and and uh, that was uh, part of the discussion when I was invited to do the uh, show here at WMNH. But uh, this particular individual uh, was uh, not wearing a mask, and uh, Jenny offered him a mask, and he's like, oh, I can't wear one, actually. Uh, you know, and then uh, turns out uh, apparently this particular individual has publicly stated that he has asthma and will hyperventilate if he wears a mask. So apparently if you uh, pretend uh, that there's some lame excuse why you can't wear a mask, it's perfectly fine to perhaps be an asymptomatic carrier and just go around infecting people. And it's just up to the rest of the world to uh, uh, put up with your BS. Um, I have asthma. Want to know, hey, and actually here I can, I, those of you watching online, watch this. You know, uh, it, radio is theater of the mind, so everyone just listening to the audio or on, on FM in their cars, you'll just have to take my word for it. But those of you watching online, you can see, or on Comcast 97 here in Manchester, I have asthma. Watch, watch what happens when I put on my face mask. Watch this, check this out. This is going to blow your mind, right? I'm wearing my face mask. Here I am, I have asthma. I am an asthmatic, and here I am with a face mask over my face. Oh, my God. Do you know what is happening to me right now as I 
with my asthma sit here with a face mask over my face? Nothing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. Uh, oh, here. Let me. I'll do the Trump thing. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say that people who claim they can't wear a face mask for medical reasons are uh, f- full of BS or anything. I, I, I'm not going to say that. I mean, you know, obviously that the individual who claims makes that claim is a liar and has no shot of being elected mayor. People in his own party don't even like him. I, don't jump to conclusions about who I'm talking about. I never mentioned the person's name. So, anyway. Um, nor have I ever done a radio show at a flower shop. Uh, let's see. Let me uh, back up here. There's, uh, I see some new, uh, some new folks in the uh, Facebook live chat. Abigail Jem joins us and says, hi, folks. Hello, Abigail. Scott Robinson, who is a top fan, says, we all know uh, who he is, Matt. He's a jackass. Don't jump to conclusions. I, I just, I, you know, I, I mean, I may have given a hint or I may not have. I don't know. Uh, Jenny is in the chat room and says, shalom. Uh, Angela Philbrook says, Nameless is running for mayor. Don't vote for Nameless. Uh, (laughs) Abigail says, uh, I know no pulmonologists who support that, quote, I have asthma, I can't wear a mask, BS. And I know pulmonologists. Yeah, people who say that are just so, they're so, there is no, I I don't think there's any known medical reason why you can't wear a face mask. I mean, it doesn't make sense. And then, of course, you've got the right-wing conspiracy theorists who say things like, oh, no, uh, you wearing a face mask actually is bad for you. It'll kill you. It, it, it does you more harm than good. You know, and of course, uh, that's pretty easy to shoot down because if that were true, no one could ever do surgery. <laughs> right? <laughs> there could be no surgery ever anywhere. You know why? Surgeons would be dropping dead. Because they wear face masks while they're doing surgery. (laughs) Medical professionals wear face masks all day long. During the pandemic, they all have to. Pre-pandemic, they didn't all have to, but a lot of them had to. And uh, they're just fine. (laughs) But uh, anyway, yeah. No, I've asked, I've asked, well, I can't wear one. That's not an impression of any specific person, but I'm just, I'm just recreating the moment. I, I, oh, actually, the person I was referring to didn't tell us. He told us separately on his own. He may or may not do a television show. He said something about on his show, I guess, he has asthma and he'll hyperventilate if he wears a face mask. But during our interaction with him, he just said, I, I, I can't wear one, actually. Whoever this person is I'm talking about. Again, I haven't said anyone's name. Just to be clear. Um, Mike Palapita is a top fan and joins us in the Facebook live chat. Uh, Mike uh, appears to be, judging from the emoji, very much enjoying the discussion. Uh, Stefan Philbrook, who is a top fan. Uh, I think I mentioned already that he's a top fan, but he's, uh, he's like one of our top, top fans. It bears repeating. Stefan says, I have asthma and I can still breathe with my face mask. I can even breathe with ma- with uh, a mask on after waking up, after walking up 11 flights of stairs at a dusty job site. Wow, it's amazing, isn't it, Stefan? You know, it's almost as though I'm going to go out on a limb here. I, this is going to be, I'm going to posit kind of a wild theory, okay? I'm just going to throw this throw this out there and you know maybe you know a mayoral candidate will hear this and find this uh, information reassuring i don't know it's almost as though they make these they make these face masks specifically so that you can breathe through them it's almost as though they make them that way on purpose so that so that you're able to breathe through it. I, I know it's crazy, isn't it? It's just wild because you I, some people, I guess, they think, oh, a face mask. That's something you put over your face so you can't breathe and you'll hyperventilate and die. No, that's actually not what they're for. That would be kind of pointless. It would be like oh, just a way of committing suicide if that were the case. No, no, no. Actually... 
They're made so you can breathe through them. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? Uh, Let's see. Dan Lavasser is a top fan and says, I have asthma, no issue. In fact, many athletes with asthma or who have allergies wear masks to keep out allergens. That, damn, that's amazing. Wow, go figure. Imagine that. Imagine that. It To keep out allergens, it, you know, it's almost as though, I'll tell you what, and again, this is crazy, right? But it's almost as though between the keeping out of allergens and the keeping out of droplets that will infect you with COVID or allow you to infect others with COVID, it's almost as though the masks, not only are you able to breathe through them, but it's it's as though they have actual practical applications and there's good reasons to wear them. Imagine that. Imagine that. Wow. What a, what a, I mean, we're just, we're learning a lot about face masks today, I'll tell you. I mean, I've been an advocate for wearing them all along, as you know, if you're a regular listener of the show, but, but there are some people out there who are just too stupid to, I'm sorry, no, no that's not nice. Uh, let me rephrase. There are some people out there who, um, aren't smart enough. That's a, a nicer way of putting it. Aren't smart enough to, to comprehend all of this. And, you know, I understand. I mean, you know, the, Sometimes the gene pool gets a little thin. What are you going to do, right? Uh, Tom Blanchard is in the Facebook live chat. Uh, Hello, Tom. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Stefan says, can't wear a mask. Oh, my head. (laughs) The owner of your building should mandate masks in public areas of the buildings. Well, I would support that. Uh, Melanie Laliberte. I think I'm getting closer on the last name. Let me know if I am. Uh, She says, just making sure I understand your point. It's BS when people say they can't wear masks. Actually, Melanie, yes, it is, because there are no known medical reasons for not being able to wear one. And by the way, even if there was a medical reason for someone not to be able to wear one, then I would suggest that that person take one for the team and not go out of his or her way uh, to uh, infect other people. Uh, You know, because they could be asymptomatic spreading. So, you know, uh, if they are and just walking around going, I can't wear one, actually. uh, You know, that's just not going to cut it. Maybe you ought to just stay home then. Uh, Why why do the rest of us have to risk getting sick? Because you can't wear one. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Uh, Stefan says, maybe it's hard to sext and taunt... High school students while wearing a mask. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. uh, I don't know where you're getting that uh, from, Stefan. I mean, I haven't indicated uh, who I was referring to. Uh, Abigail Jem says, isn't it just pronounced La Liberty? Is it? I I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like the way I said it, though. I think the way I said it's kind of nice. Tom Blanchard says, I went to CMC for an appointment and they made me wear two face masks. Wow. And and you live to tell about it, Tom. Imagine that. Yeah, well, that's something that, um, you know, Dr. Fauci has been uh, talking about is, uh, and of course, Rand Paul, you know, because he has to be, he has to be as Trumpian as possible. Uh, Rand Paul, remember when he was sort of a quasi-libertarian, now he's just MAGA. Uh, Rand Paul made fun of uh, Dr. Fauci for wearing two masks and said, you know, isn't that just theater? But the theory behind wearing two masks is, you know, if you're wearing those, like, for example, if you're wearing those uh, those surgical masks that you can, you know, that th- those are the ones that I used to wear. Now I wear Jenny got us these KN95s um, and they're called 95 because they keep out they're supposed to keep out 95 percent of droplets or particulates. Is that a word? Particulates. Um, so, uh, you know, so they not only protect others from you, but they also do help protect you if you're the one wearing the mask from breathing in someone's, uh, COVID. But, um, but if you're, if you're not wearing a mask like that, if you have more like the standard surgical masks that, that, you know, like the, you know, the, those sort of generic, uh, well, you can get them everywhere, you know, convenience stores carry them now and boxes of them you can get. Um, it's, it's, uh, maybe a good idea to wear two. Or if you're wearing a cloth mask, maybe you wear another, maybe you wear that surgical mask over it or under it or something, just because it gives you an extra layer. Because again, you know, if you're just wearing the single mask, that is 
going to protect other people from you in case you have COVID and don't know it. That's going to protect others from you more than protecting you from others. But I think if you're wearing the two masks, the idea is it's going to protect you and others because it's, uh, you know, you're, you're really kind of doubling up the, uh, the protection there. So, um, so I'm not surprised actually, uh, that they, uh, that they made you wear too, Tom. That's interesting. Uh, Angela Philbrook says, uh, don't go assuming gender of nameless. Oh, wait, he doesn't think transgendered is a real thing. Right, right. I should refer to nameless as they or them, though, out of respect. You just never know. Um, let's see. <laughs> Apparently it makes Melanie chuckle to hear me struggle with her name. <laughs> All right. Uh, Let's see. Well, let me give the numbers again. Uh, If you'd like to join us, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text us at 617-917-4476. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to matt at mattconnerton.com. I do want to take a moment, too, to remind you all that today here in New Hampshire, uh, they have now opened. Um, they have now opened up the vaccination appointments to thirty plus. So on Monday it was forty plus. Now it's thirty plus, and on Friday it will be sixteen plus. And there's some news today. We'll come back to it, but um, I, there was some news today. Is it? I think it's Pfizer. They're now saying that uh, they've concluded or or are close to concluding. There's evidence to suggest that the Pfizer vaccine is 100 uh, percent effective in uh, in kids. I forget what the uh, what the age range was exactly because um, we're going to we're going to come back to that later, probably. But. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's good. But but yeah, uh, like I was talking about, like I've been talking about all week, um, I won't go through the whole thing again, but. It's very, very easy to sign up if you go to the just Google New Hampshire vaccinations. I don't I don't even remember the exact web domain, but uh, just Google New Hampshire vaccinations. Uh, go to the uh, go to the site. Uh, the There's, I think, maybe five screening questions. You know, they'll ask you about your age. Um, actually, at this point, because it's so open, you know, now that it's open to anybody 30 plus, I don't know if the screening questions, it might only be one or two screening questions at this point. And it's very easy to set up your account. You know, you put in your name, your address, contact info. I think that's about it. And then, uh, and then it'll give you, you know, you can select what your mileage limit is as far as how far you're willing to travel. I think the choices are, 10 miles, 20 miles, 50 miles, and I forget what's after that. I selected 20 miles on mine, which is why I ended up going from here. I went up to Concord because that's where I was able to get one that same day because I signed up at about 1.30. It was between 1.15 and 1.30 a.m. Monday morning, late Sunday night, early Monday morning, and then 8 a.m. Monday morning, I had my appointment. Um it's very, very easy. And I I just I, I the reason I keep stressing that part specifically is because I know. Just knowing human nature, I know there's people out there who are going to feel like, I mean, I obviously there's vaccine hesitancy. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about people who are like, you know, worried about, oh, you know, interactions with the government can be challenging and stressful and, and you know, it makes you procrastinate it a little bit. Um you know, oh, I've had a bad experience at the DMV. I don't want to do this. I'll do it tomorrow or maybe the next day, whatever. Trust me, it is so, so simple. They've done a fantastic job of really streamlining this, and it's so easy to sign up and get this done. So please do it. Do it for yourself. Do it for your family. Do it for everyone around you. Um, we're in a race against time. These variants, look, the surge is here. The surge is here. It's not a matter at this point of avoiding the next big surge. It's in progress. Now it's a matter of getting through the surge and trying to minimize it, but it is happening. Okay. So, um, these variants, I mean, you look at what's happening, what's been happening in Europe with these variants and the havoc that they have wreaked. Um, the variants are here. They're becoming dominant already. So 
we need to try to get out ahead of this as much as we can. In some states, it's going to be easier to do that in others. And I, I feel really good about where we are here in, here in New Hampshire because, you know, these vaccinations are, are going pretty fast and furious. Like I said, I was amazed that on March 29th, I was getting vaccinated. I honestly, I, I remember thinking maybe July or August if I was lucky. March 29th at 8 a.m., I got my first shot and I get my second shot. Uh, before the end of the um, before the end of April, so um, twenty eight days uh, between shots for Pfizer. So um, please just just do it. You know, if you've got vaccine hesitancy and whatnot. Although uh, polling data shows vaccine hesitancy is dropping um, rapidly in this country, including among Black Americans, who you know because of T- Tuskegee and some other factors, they have reason. You know, they have valid reason to feel the way that they do. But, you know, I think watching people, watching all these people get vaccinated and then they're fine. You know, I got I got my first shot and I haven't grown a third arm. You know, I'm fine. Um, Who was it? I I think Jenny made the, the comment the other day on the show. You know, when you see rich people scrambling to try to get the vaccine, then, you know, it's probably safe because rich people have the money to just you know, wait this whole thing out. They don't have to get vaccinated. They can just, they have the money to kick back and stay home and, and just, you know, so if, if they're going ahead and getting vaccinated, you know, it's probably safe because they don't have to take the risk. You know, working people, people who can't afford to just stay home have to take the risk, right? But I don't, I, I feel very confident that there is no risk and don't believe too, oh, well, you know, this is brand new technology. It's not, it's well over a decade. This has been uh, the mRNA uh, technology. I think about 12 years now, It's it's been here. They finally just had cause to use it in a big way. So, um, and it may, a silver lining out of all this though is um, that mRNA technology, uh, Jenny had shared out an article the other day about, you know, potentially using it to fight cancer. Or to prevent cancer um, and and other things as well. So so there may be some silver linings to this whole experience, and we have to look for those where we can find them. God knows, but um, you know, but I I think in New Hampshire we're going to be in better shape than most places in terms of this surge that we're experiencing. Um, uh, places where they're behind on vaccinations, larger states. It is an advantage being in a smaller state. That's for sure. Um, but I think Governor Chris Sununu has done a great job uh, on the pandemic response. And, um, you know, so I, I think I think we're in good shape at this. Some states where, you know, especially in states like Texas, where, you know, Governor Abbott said we're going to uh, lift that mask mandate, which. <laughs> yikes, dude. <laughs> anyway, but my my larger point being here in New Hampshire, it's very easy to uh, to sign up. Uh, Wayne said, uh, Wayne Noel in the chat said, Pfizer supposedly 100% for ages 12 to 15. Um, oh, and that's what Angela Philbrook said as well. Yeah, that's, um, that's outstanding. So we're getting there, my friends. We are getting there. Um, Abigail says uh, in the chat, I'm at the doctor's and my appointment was at 3 p.m. and I'm still waiting for her. Oh, well, doctors, <laughs> doctor's offices don't always run on time. That is for sure. Dan Lavasser says in 28 days I get shot. Uh, I assume with the, the vaccine. Um, let's see. Uh, Dan also says uh, shot shot slots are nearing 20 to 30 days out as of this morning, at least for me. Okay, well, that's all the more reason to to hurry up and sign up. I'm glad I was so proactive. I really was, too. I was, um, you know, I think I mentioned this the other day. I had a conversation with Jenny about this on Sunday. I said to her, because the governor had announced, was it the Friday before? Governor Sununu had announced what the plan was for this week and how beginning on Monday of this week, 40 plus, anyone 40 plus would be able to register. And then on Wednesday, 30 plus, and then on Friday, 16 plus. 
And um, I, I commented to Jenny on Sunday. I said, you know, they never told us a time. He just announced Monday, but he never said at what time on Monday, I assume in the morning, but he never said at what time on Monday it will go live where you can, uh, where 40 and, and up can register. And she said, you know, that was probably intentional. They probably want to keep it ambiguous so that they don't have a crush of people all trying to register at once. And uh, I said, you know, that makes a lot of sense, but I, um, I, I think she's right about that. But what I did was I stayed up, which I, I'm up anyway. I'm nocturnal by nature. I tend to be up late. Um, Sunday nights, I usually, uh, I, th- there's a, another weekly radio show that I do on another station that I record and produce at home. So Sunday nights, I'm usually doing all that, putting that together. So I was up working anyway. So, you know, I tried a little after midnight, nothing had changed on the site, tried again a little bit after 1 a.m. The screening questions had changed. It wasn't letting me all the way through, but the screening questions had changed. And I was like, oh, here we go. Closed out the browser tried again, was able to get right through, get my appointment and whatnot. So because I did it, because I'm sure a lot of people assumed, well, you know, Monday morning, you know, I'll try like 7 a.m., 8 a.m. before I go to work or whatever. But I was, uh, (laughs) you know, early bird catches the worm. I was very early. Um, I was probably one of the first ones to sign up. So I was able to, uh, (laughs) it was about 1 a.m. My appointment was 8 a.m. So I was able to get an appointment scheduled for seven hours after I signed up. So, but, um, but from what Dan is saying, it sounds like those appointments are filling up. So again, all the more reason to be proactive. If they're 20 to 30 days out now, you know, don't put it off. And then, you know, maybe it's, you know, 40 days or 50 days out. I mean, it may not come to that, the the way this whole thing is going and the efficiency of it, but don't take the risk, please. If you're listening to this show, You know, I I care about you. I want you to be able to keep listening, purely selfish reasons. Um, No, I'm kidding. I I care about everybody. I want, even if you're not listening to the show, of course, if you're not listening to the show, you're not hearing me talk. So you wouldn't know that I'm saying this. But if through somehow osmosis, you you aren't listening to the show, I still want you to know, please don't wait. Don't hesitate. Just get your appointment. It's very easy to do. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hoo-ah. Hoo I know that hoo How are you, Tony D? What's up, man? I'm I'm very happy, man. My my both my parents both uh got their uh COVID shot. They signed up on uh Saturday and they both received it today, their first shot today. No kidding. So so, so that yeah. well, that's pretty efficient then. If if you're able to uh where you are, if you're able to, to sign up on uh where where do do they live in Pennsylvania? Yeah. Okay. So that's great. So so they signed up on Saturday, and they got their shot when? Both today at 3 o'clock. Okay, great. So that's less than a week. That's that's great. That's actually, yeah, well, it's only they, Wednesday. They actually so. got, it, they got it at the Sam's Club. It's only four days. Oh, no kidding, at Sam's Club? Wow. Yes, they got it at Sam's Club, yep. Good for them. Good, good, good. So, so, so that makes me, it made me. Made me feel real good. My dad's got some heart issues and stuff like that. Yeah. So like you know, I was like, I was like, Dad, I was like, he was fighting him because he was like, I don't know if I should do it. But like you were just saying about like the database, he after he seen like like millions of people getting it, he yeah. was like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm going to get it. So yeah. He, he finally bunk, he bunkered down and he got it, and mm-hmm. uh, he called me like an hour ago, let me know about the process. It was a long process though at Sam's Club. They had a lot of people, but. How long? Uh, how, how long did they have to wait? Do you know? Well, my mom was. My mom said that they were outside for like forty-five minutes, and it's raining out. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but she said it was well worth it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was well worth it. it was well worth it. So, no doubt. Now, it's, it's, so here's my question to you. Yes. And we talked about it before, but. Do you ever see the mass going away after we hit where we where we need to be? Oh, definitely. Um, I think uh, I think this summer, yeah. The, the one the one giant monkey wrench in all of this is these variants and the surge that they're causing. But um, but yeah, I think very cautiously. 
optimistic I am. I think that uh, I think that this summer will will be able to hopefully reach herd immunity, and um, yeah, I think the masks will go away. See, I'm different, man. I feel like I feel like there's going to be these variants scare me. Yeah, right. Yeah, see, they're they're starting to scare me a little bit. And like, is the vaccine protecting us against these variants? Like, well, how much? Because they say they say what once everyone hits like herd, herd immune, immunity that the vac the virus might actually weaken itself is that what is that what they're saying or something something like that yeah I'm a little unclear on that uh, on that part of it and how that works but I but I I think I think the idea is that once the virus um, if I if I understand it correctly once the virus kind of begins to run out of options in terms of where to go because so many people are inoculated that that the virus has nowhere to go, then it just begins to die out and it does begin to weaken because it can no longer it it, it as as it is prevented from replicating in people, then it 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 does begin to weaken. So I think that's part of the herd immunity concept. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure I fully yeah, understand that part. But the, there is good news. I mean, the the with the variants, it's a mixed picture. I mean, the bad news about the variants is that it spreads more easily, apparently much more easily, and, or I shouldn't say it, I should say they, because there's several variants. Um, they spread more easily. They're more easily transmissible and deadlier. That's the bad news. The good news about the variants is... All indications so far from what I've read are that the vaccines are effective against the variants, um, just as or at least almost as effective against the variants as they are uh, of the original as as they are, you know, to the original uh, uh, COVID-19. So if we can get ahead of it or get ahead of them enough by getting enough people vaccinated, we're going to be OK. And and I, I do think the masks will go away this summer. One thing about the masks, though, I would love to see us. And it, this is probably a big reach. But, you know, in Asian culture is one of the things that that we've learned is um, when when someone is sick with a cold or a flu, they wear a face mask around other people oh, yeah. so that yeah, they yeah. don't so that so that they don't get other people around them sick. And now that a lot of people have kind of gotten used to wearing masks, I would love it if in the United States we would adopt that into our culture where a a sick person, you know, uh, somebody's not going to stay home from work, obviously, because they have a cold. Right. But maybe wear a face mask while they're while they have symptoms just so they don't pass their cold to all of their coworkers. I think that would be a really great thing um to to take from, from because uh, i i guess that that's how it works in in asian cultures they're very but but they're more considerate of other people whereas you know we're americans and we only have to care about ourselves and america <laughs> america, america. so uh america. so i i don't know if we'll ever adapt that but i would love to see it yeah i um i i, I think you know the the colds and the flus and stuff have been really down because I think of the fact that everyone's been practicing very good hygiene. Mm-hmm. You know, the, they, they said that those numbers have been extremely down. Um, another interesting thing that I read the other day is like people that got stuck um, getting the first shot in the beginning of all this mm-hmm. and they, they still haven't got their second shot yet. And um, some people have gone almost two months without getting the second shot because of scheduling problems yeah um and uh they just put out yesterday that and i found this interesting they said that if you got the first shot of the pfizer or the moderna you're up to 55 to 65 percent covered already so maybe more reality maybe more you said yeah jenny brought to my attention there's there's new cdc data that shows after a couple of weeks of the first shot of Pfizer specifically, it might be 80% immunity. Well, and, that's good because yeah. if you actually look at the big picture, right, Matt? Johnson & Johnson is only giving you a 65% chance, right, of, is it of that? effectiveness or 75%, I believe, or whatever it is. Okay. And 
if you get if you get like one shot of the Pfizer and you're not you're you had scheduling problems, you're actually okay. Like you're not. It's yeah. No, you shouldn't like throw no alarms up because like if, you, if Jenny said eighty percent, I mean you're already surpassed the Johnson and Johnson what they're putting out for for being fully vaccinated yeah. under their under their terms. You yeah, know what I, I mean like yeah, I think the I think the new CDC data on Pfizer specifically it was. After the first shot, after a couple of weeks, because immunity does immunity doesn't take hold right away. Your body needs a little time to build those um, those antibodies and the spike proteins. But after a couple of weeks, you get to you get up to about eighty percent, and then once you get the second shot, a couple of weeks after that, you're way up like ninety five or higher. So, but that's that's um, why for a while, when when the distribution of the vaccine was still a larger concern, there was all this talk. You know, Fauci never went along with it, but some uh, epidemiologists and virologists were saying maybe we should just go to one shot for everybody, just so we can get that many more people vaccinated, and 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 uh, and you know drive down the virus that way instead of instead of the two shot system, but. Uh, but Fauci always insisted, no, we should stay the course with the two shots. And I think now now that the distribution is going so well and the administering of the vaccines, I think he probably was right. Um, but uh, I think only about 15 percent of the population has now been fully vaccinated with with both shots. So we do have a long way what to go. We, what, what are we at? Ten million a day? Is that what it is? No, no, no. Um, I think we're. I think we we're at two million a day, maybe though, or two and a half. Two, two, two and a half. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Wayne in the chat room just posted one dose of Pfizer's vaccine was shown to be eighty five percent effective in preventing symptomatic disease uh, fifteen to twenty eight days after being given. Eighty five percent. That's really good. So that's crazy. That's, that's amazing. One shot of Pfizer is stronger than the Johnson and Johnson, which is. Well, like I said, I think it's well. What is it? Sixty-five or seventy-five? And it, so I forget what it was. But like one shot of Pfizer is more stronger than the Johnson and Johnson whole fully vaccinated one shot. Sounds like it. Yeah. 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 Jesus, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, I, if I was a betting man, I'd say uh, I hope I hope by like Fourth of July around that time that we could be maskless and have I think so. Over. I, I, I think so. I, I do believe that this summer um, will be the beginning of, of things being normal. I, I really do. Seems I heard I heard this morning on the morning show, Easy G stars and stuff with the mayor, huh? I heard something about that. I don't I don't really know what it's all about, but but he'll be uh, he'll be calling in uh, tomorrow uh, to do his or skyping in rather uh, to do his entertainment report. Although we we won't I'm, I, I don't plan to get into that specifically with him because that involves, uh, you know, the mayor of our city and we don't do local Manchester uh, politics uh, on this show. We so have no, ma- no mayor gate. No yeah, mayor. no mayor gate. We avoid we avoid that. We don't we don't get we don't get into politics on a micro level here. Uh, not even to have fun with it because it uh, it, it it it's just you, you don't uh, you don't uh, poop where you eat. I'll clean up the uh, expression there a little bit for FM radio. It just causes headaches that management doesn't need. That's why when I was talking earlier about a certain mayoral candidate, I never mentioned the individual's name. So you know people you can with that. people can speculate about who I was talking about. <clears throat> yeah. About cold hints. Yeah, you know, it's a few hints here and there, maybe, or maybe not. It, it, maybe I didn't give any hints. Maybe they were things that people might perceive as hints, but they were actually misdirection. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ah, because I'm clever that way. I'm clever that way. I like way. it. I yeah. like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, I just wanted to call in, see what was up. All right, Tony. D. Oh, by the way, have you been, I forget, have you been fully vaccinated now? Yeah, I've been fully vaccinated. I've been fully vaccinated for two months now. Oh, okay. I couldn't remember. I knew you had your first shot. I couldn't remember if you had your yeah, second one already. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I've been, I've been good for a while. Yeah. Actually, believe it or not, um, everyone at work is vaccinated, right? Because like we had like that thing like dangling over us where, when they got us all set up for it, mm-hmm. and um, believe it or not, like I don't know, it was probably about like three weeks ago. 
we were actually able to sit in the break room and they allowed us to like unmask because everyone has been vaccinated. You had to show your card and yeah. put it in your DOT file. So we were able to sit in, in the room without our mask on to talk because we're all, we're all fully vaccinated. I don't think there's anyone at the company that's not vaccinated right now. I, from what I understand, because, um, Obviously, the girls and stuff like that in the office, they wear their masks as people come in and out. Yeah. But, like, when we're working in the warehouse or we're working in, in manufacturing of uh, of everything, um, and, and then we take, like, a lunch break or something, like, we, we don't have our mask on and we're talking. Like, before, like, we were distanced away, they actually brought the cables kind of back together um, because they – Everyone got fully vaccinated. I don't know if you're for that or you're against that, but everyone is va- everyone is vaccinated where I work. So yeah, they had to. They had to- I don't. Uh, I I don't. I don't see any harm uh, uh, at, at this point. I mean, if everyone there is fully vaccinated, then why not? Was it weird, or was it just? Kind of- uh, it was very weird. Yeah, it was yeah. very weird. Um, it was more um, <laughs> surreal. Um, I got I got back early, and I was in the I was in the driver's room, and like we were all sitting there without our masks on. And um, the driver's room is where just you go in and you see your transportation manager at the end of the day. But we had – there was a piece of glass that was that was over top of that that was right there. And then there was like a slot box, like like an old-style like bank that, that used to be there. They actually took all that down, and those guys are on this because they only deal with the drivers. Yeah. So And the drivers are all vaccinated. So when you walk in now, like that thing's gone, and you're handing your paperwork over to, to – to the person like you used to not sliding it under a piece of glass and it's, it's just, it's just it's just it is weird like it is weird because you got stuck into like this norm of like glass and being distanced from each other from the cafeteria the, yeah. the vending machines were gone and now the vending machines are back huh. and like it's just like it was it was weird it's like yeah. now like it's like slowly coming back together but when we're out on the street we still have to wear our masks yeah. and gloves and all that stuff because of the fact that we're going into places that we don't know if they've been vaccinated or if they have not been. But when we get when we come back and like you're in the, in the break room, you know, again, I don't know if you're for that or not, but my company made everyone pretty much get the vaccine. Pretty much dangled their job in front of them and said, "Look, we're we're doing this. We're a medical I, company, and you know, we're yeah. we're we're dealing." We're dealing with this. I'm 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 for that. Uh, that 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 you know because everyone should have a safe, uh, you know, a safe place to work. You know, I I think that yeah, completely yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it was weird. It was weird. I mean, still is kind of weird, but like <laughs> it's kind of cool to get back to normal. It'd be even cooler to be able to do it at a concert because God knows I need a concert in my life. <laughs> I might I might I you know what I might even pull a bad one and go see five finger death punch. If they come in, 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 in town, just, just to go to a concert. Ew. <laughs> Have some standards, man. Just to go, Matt, just to go. Oh, there's just something, to go. there's something off about their sound. I can't quite explain it, but I know I'm not the only one who hears it, but I can't quite explain it's it. It's the vocals, man. It's the vocals. I don't like the way he sings. I think you're That's right. It. I'm telling. It's the vocals. It's like it's they are the nickel back of metal. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you that because Chad Chad uh, Kroger, his vocals are so nasally, and when he sings, it's just like like they got a good beat behind them. They got a good mm-hmm. rhythm. But when you hear him start singing, it's like look at this photograph. It's like Creed. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, Creed with arms wide open. Just think of that song for a minute. Just, just take that oh, in. Oh God, I hate that song. Creed. You know what I hate about with arms wide open by Creed? I hate the pretentious Everything. way. <laughs> well, yeah, but I also I hate the pretentious way he pronounces the word open. He pronounces it o pun. It's not <laughs> o pun. It's open. It only <laughs> only only pretentious people pronounce the word o pun. It's not open. It's not arms wide open. It's open, open. Is, is that the one where they're in a boat? Is that the one where they're in, in, like the streets flooded and there's oh, a tiger that comes floating probably, down the street? Probably. I've never sat through the video. 
I don't know. I, I remember. I remember one of Creed's videos. There was a. There was like a, a lion, like in like a. That in a might be that. That, came... that might be my sacrifice. I feel like that's yeah. my sacrifice. Another unbearable. One of them song. had a. One of them had a lion in a in a in a, in a rowboat that came like down the street and like he he, he like swan swan by it or something. I don't. I don't oh know. God. <laughs> Creed. I liked oh. I liked my own prison the first time I heard it, but I think that's only because I thought it was Alice in Chains. How are you a Godsmack? Well, I'll tell you. So, you know, I'm a New Hampshire guy, and Godsmack is from New Hampshire. Having said that, I don't like Sully's vocals. I never have. Are you kidding me? I don't like the way he sings. I don't like his oh, voice. Man, I think they're amazing. We used to play uh, in one of the bands I was in. We used to cover... Um, What's the, is it called go is it called go away I'm doing the best I ever did I'm doing the best I can you know the song I mean yeah I know I know what you're talking is about is it called go I think it's called go away and it's a fun song to play and I enjoyed the way the singer in the band that I was in sang it but I don't something about Sully's vocals just really great on me I love Sully I love him I had the chance of meeting him back in like 2013 and uh it could he was he he was such a cool dude like he was just he was that him him and the and the guys from Dropkick Murphys are the two people that I met that have come up around your area yeah and those they they're, they're they're just like I don't know what it is but they're just like the most coolest dudes ever like I I that's where we have a disagreement I love Godsmack they, just because of the fact when I met Sully he was he was awesome like he took literally like it was like meeting someone at a bar shaking hands and just having a conversation about music and like, Hey, did you have a good time? Like it was, it was awesome. It was just a great experience meeting that guy. I've met him, but, but just very briefly, no chance to actually, uh, uh, Actually, I met him here in Manchester, but I didn't have a chance to really have any kind of a conversation with him, but very little guy. He's little, we, we small. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but, and, and and you know what? He, He has a sense of humor. Yeah. You know what I mean? He does. He, he has a real, real, real nice sense of humor. Like, like he's he's funny. He's 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 very jokingly about 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 everything. And like we're like I got into the conversation about like back in thirteen about how these new bands are coming out and they're trying to be so much like how like the older bands are. And like we got into I forget how the conversation went, but he was making jokes about it. Like everyone can have bleach blonde hair and blonde tips, but just remember when I was like I stand alone. I was the first one with blonde tips playing metal. <laughs> I was like, you know what, you do got a point. <laughs> Yeah, that might be true. Oh, I don't like. He had, two, he had two eyebrow piercings and blonde tips. So dude, like, like that. He 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 transcended that. <laughs> I just I don't like the way he sings. Uh, I stand alone. It's like, oh, oh stop. come on, give oh. him some credit. They're better. They're they're better than Five Finger Death Punch. Yeah, uh, agreed. So, agreed. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to get into, <laughs> into the music news. So, all right, Tony. <laughs> all right. All right, all right, man. All right, man. Yeah. Thank you for the call. All right, bye, bye. All right, Tony D from Philadelphia and uh, the Tony D Show, and he's on uh, the return edition of No More Excuses with Brian Mackey. I think I shared that out on uh, on Facebook the other day, but uh, that is up on the YouTube. Uh, let's see. Let's we are past the top of the hour. Let's take a break, uh, play a couple things, and then show some love to our sponsors, and then we'll be back. I'm going to play this. I found a uh, radio edit of this. Uh, Little Nas X track Montero that has uh, everyone so upset. <laughs> but it's the clean version. It's the radio edit. So we'll play this and maybe one other thing. And then we'll, uh, like I said, we'll uh, play some commercials, pay the bills, and uh, and then we'll be back. More Matt Connors and Unleashed coming up in hour number two. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We are well into our number two numero dos 
of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. He's streaming at WMNHradio.org. And you can also go to mattconnerton.com for all your online streaming options, the phone numbers to call, the phone number to text, all the social media for the show and for me. It is all right there for you. Uh, let's see. You can also... Um, uh, sorry, I got distracted there. Somebody's messaging me something I'll have to look at later. Anyway, all right. <laughs> but it is Wednesday, March 31, 2021. And uh, wow, tomorrow is the first day of April. Can you believe it? We are... Uh, I still can't believe I got my first shot of the vaccine. But if you'd like to call us, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text us at 617-917-4476. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to Matt at mattconnerton.com. And, of course, you can always opine and interact in the Facebook live chat. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to call us at 603-250-6007. Oh, by the way, too, I meant to mention this earlier and it slipped my mind. I should remind you or let you all know uh, that um, the uh, all the episodes have been updated on the WMNH website at WMNHradio.org. So if you're looking for archived episodes of this show or any of the shows, The Morning Show with Peter White, or any of our other programs uh, that were not up uh, last Friday's Retrospectrum Radio with Paul E.C., etc., those are all up now at WMNHradio.org. It has been fully updated, and it is complete. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's take a look at the Facebook live chat. Uh, a lot of uh, great comments in there about some of the things we've been discussing today and then we will uh we will get a new topic in in a few minutes but uh angela philbrook uh, said you know we were talking about the vaccinations earlier uh happy both my kids are excited to be able to register for the shot on friday my kids are 25 and 29 they appear to be in the minority of their friend groups by getting the vaccine yes uh of course on friday uh, well, as of today, it's 30 and up here in New Hampshire, and beginning Friday, it is 16 and up here in New Hampshire. We'll be able to register for appointments. Uh, so uh, so th- that's, a, that's a great thing. Um, very impressed. Very impressed with the rollout here in New Hampshire, and I think Governor Chris Sununu has done a phenomenal job. Uh, Eric Street, who is a top fan, says 486 positive results today. Yikes. Is that... Across uh, New Hampshire, I assume, Eric. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, um, we are in a spike. And, um, you know, it's it's at this point, I don't I don't think it's a result of I don't think it's a a matter rather of avoiding uh, another uh, surge, the fourth uh, surge here in the United States. It's already here. It's already happening. It's too late to stop it. So now it's a matter of just getting through it trying to get through it with hopefully as little sickness and death as possible. It could have been avoided, but, well, a lot of this could have been avoided. But, um, you know, it's it's a combination of the variants that are spreading rapidly and becoming dominant with, um, as Bobby Champagne just referred to in the chat room, in fact, uh, St. Patrick's Day, partiers on St. Patrick's Day, and, of course, all the, uh, all the D-bags who decided to go to spring break in Florida, during a pandemic, um, and uh, you know, and 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 all the people too who are just, you know, a lot of people are binary thinkers and they can't hold two thoughts in their minds at once. So they see the vaccinations and how well that's going, and that is going well, and they go, "Oh, okay, the pandemic's over. I can. I was. I was paying attention until now. Now I'm just going to let my guard down." And people are letting their guards down much too soon. And it's like, no, we are not out of this yet. We are close. We are finally close to the finish line, but we got to keep going. When you're running a race, if you're running a marathon, you don't say, oh, okay, well, I'm almost to the finish line. I guess I'm just going to walk the rest of the way instead of run. No, you keep running you, until you get till you cross the finish line, right? That's what we need to do. But unfortunately, a lot of people just don't care. And so... 
you know, we've got to deal with another big surge. After this surge, which will kill a lot of people, unfortunately, and make a lot of people sick, but after this surge, I think that will be the end of it. And, uh, you know, and I am, you know, like I was talking with Tony D earlier, I am confident and cautiously optimistic that this summer things will be relatively normal. Uh, Miriam Banish is in the uh, chat room. Uh, Miriam says, good afternoon. We'll be listening in the car mostly. Stefan Philbrook, who is a top fan, says, good news yesterday. A federal judge ruled that the non-disclosure agreement the former president required employees to sign is so broad and vague, it is unenforceable. Woohoo! Can't wait to hear the stories. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Wayne Noel who is a top fan from Michigan, says, keep in mind, if you have any kind of virus in your system, common cold, flu, et cetera, you will test positive for COVID? Really? Is that true? I haven't heard that anywhere or read that anywhere. Is that true? I find that hard to believe, Wayne. Um, I'd, I'd like to know your source on that. I've that, I've never heard that before. Uh, Dan Love, actually, <laughs> I find that, then what's the point of getting tested if you're sick? Yeah, that can't be, Wayne, that can't be right because I've known people who get sick who have a cold. They go to get tested to make sure it's not COVID and the test, and they test negative for COVID. So that doesn't, the, Wayne, that doesn't make sense to me at all. I mean, please clarify if you could, but that makes no, that makes no sense to me. Uh, Dan Lavasser, uh, top fan asking, is anyone getting the J and J? Yeah. Uh, no one that I personally know of has gotten the J&J yet, the Johnson & Johnson. Um, I I was hoping when I went to get my shot Monday morning that it would be that because the J&J is one and done. But then again, uh, it, you know, as we were discussing with Tony D earlier, it might be better, you know, getting the Pfizer or the Moderna uh, because the efficacy rate, it sounds like, is higher. Tom Blanchard says, uh, I registered last week. Still got to wait another 10 days out. Registered for a, a vaccination. Um, Angela Philbrook says, I'm three weeks out from my last Moderna, so I can go to spring break now? Joke. Joking. Just kidding. JK is just kidding. Sorry. Um, Melanie says, don't forget. The vaccine rollout was only possible because of all the work Trump did. That man is the best at everything he does. Yes, yes. Just ask him. In fact, uh, you got to hear all about it if you were lucky enough to be at that wedding in Mar-a-Lago. Did you see the video of this? There was a wedding in Mar-a-Lago and Trump comes out and he, you know, gives a little speech to congratulate the bride and groom and... Goes on talking about how the election was stolen from him and how terrible Biden is and the country's in so much trouble and the media lies about him and all this. And he just kind of rambles. It's like he does his uh, like he's like he's uh, calling into Fox and Friends. It's uh, quite stunning. Of course, the people there loved it. But I would assume that the and they were cheering for him at one point. But I assume that the, you know, a a crowd of people at Mar-a-Lago for a wedding you know, they're at Mar-a-Lago for the wedding. They're going to be a pro-Trump crowd, I would assume. So uh, so they were very happy to see him. But uh, but it is surreal. I got to tell you, you know, even if you're MAGA, you got to admit, it's surreal to watch a video of a former president of the United States at a wedding standing there holding a microphone, looking like he's working on his nightclub act, and maybe he is. Um, you know, just rambling on and on about the election and how it was stolen and all this. It's it's weird. It's like, you know, it's the kind of thing where you go, did someone slip me a hallucinogenic or is this actually happening? Am I really watching this? It's very, very strange. But then I heard, too, that if you go to Trump's new website, you can, I think you can actually book him for your wedding. I'm not kidding when I say that. I did hear that. Um, or perhaps your bar mitzvah. Or whatever, I don't know. Corporate functions. At least if you're having them at Mar-a-Lago. And I think he's on Cameo now, too. Do you know what Cameo is? Uh, Cameo, for the uninitiated, 
Uh, of course, you know, the kids know, the young, hip crowd that listens to this show. So most of you probably know. But uh, <laughs> but Cameo, uh, you know, celebrities uh, will, uh, y- you pay them, you pay them money on Cameo, and they will uh, make a personalized video for you or your loved one, whomever it is. You know, people buy these cameos for, you know, as birthday presents for people or whatnot. So, you know, you could have, uh, you could hire through Cameo, Former president of the United States, Donald John Trump, to uh, uh, make a birthday message for uh, for your loved one. Wouldn't that be fun? That's uh, the era we live in. Uh, Angela says regarding uh, Easy G on the morning show, all Eric did is express an opinion on how he felt. He said nothing wrong at all. Well, I'll be the judge of that, Angela. I mean, you know, Eric did say the other day because it seems that the tablet gate scandal has finally concluded. So, you know, what does Eric like to do at the end of one scandal? He, you know, he's a go getter. He likes to get started on that next scandal. So who knows? Uh, let's see. (laughs) Rob Dion says, I think they should name it after him. I think referring to the vaccine. Geraldo had suggested that on Fox. They should, uh, name a, uh, Trump vaccine after him and build statues, Rob says. (laughs) Well, there was that, um, there was a wax, uh, statue, uh, at, um, where was it? I forget where it was now a wax figure that someone had created of Trump and they had to they had to put it away they had to put it in storage because people kept punching it and it was getting damaged um let's see Mike Pelopita is a top fan in the Facebook live chat. Mike of course from a, one of our wonderful sponsors here at WMNH Queen City Cabinetry and uh, a, a big supporter of all the shows here and of the station. And uh, he seemed to be enjoying the uh, anti-vax Janet <laughs> that I played during the break. That is from uh, Dr. Z on YouTube. Tom Blanchard says, did you hear about the guy who built a wall to keep the people out? Then a guy comes along and tears down the wall and then blaming the other guy because people are getting in? No, I didn't hear that. Uh, Melanie says, you are so right. We should send kids fleeing violence right back into the desert. I mean, it worked out so well for Moses. Oh, Melanie getting biblical there. Uh, or you could close your eyes and pretend they are white. Oh, ooh, things are getting a little contentious. Uh, things are getting a little dicey in the chat room, which I enjoy, by the way. I actually love that. I love a good chat room fight. Um... Let's see. Tom says, close the borders. Got to let the kids in, Tom. That's my position. Um, <laughs> Melanie says, whoa, Europeans can still come over, right? Let's not go crazy. By the way, a lot of people don't know this. Do you know what the greatest source of illegal immigration is in the United States? It's not people coming across the southern border. It is people overstaying their visas, people who came into the country legally and their visa expires. They have a visa to be in the country and their visa expires and they don't leave. And that is the number one cause of illegal immigration in the United States. People who are in the country illegally, it's people who overstay their visas. A lot of people don't know that. That's why some of us talk about the need to reform the immigration system. Don't get me wrong. Build that wall sounds really great at a rally full of people who need a simple uh, three-word slogan that they can all chant in unison. Uh, Build that wall is much easier to chant than comprehensive immigration reform is needed now to actually solve the problem. That's a lot to, to chant, you know. So I get it. You know, we we don't want to, um, uh, you know, make it complicated or anything, except it actually is all very complicated. But, you know, it's, build that wall is a lot easier to for people to grasp, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Bobby says, I'm getting a 10-foot fence for my entire property except for the front. It will make me feel safer in my old age, LOL. Oh, 
Uh, Brian Mackey in all caps, forgive the yelling, but he wrote this in all caps. Tony and I are going to invite Trump on no more excuses so he can share his fantasy-based methodology. Well, that's very exciting. Uh, Stephen Philbrook says Trump made the pathetic washed up end of career Jake LaMotta Robert De Niro uh, look good in Raging Bull. Ooh, Raging Bull is a great film, by the way. If you've never seen it, you must. Now, speaking of the border, well, here, let me give the numbers again, and then I, I, I have something. Uh, 603-250-6007 is a number, 603-250-6007. Now, I did get uh, in, uh, an email from our good friend Mike Doyle. And uh, regarding the border, now, he titled this, Border Crisis. If this was Trump, you would be all over him. Where is Biden and Harris? Um, so this is what the uh, the email said. Uh, the number is up to 17,000 unaccompanied minors in cages on top of each other, as the video I sent you shows. Uh, one out of 10 is testing positive for COVID inhumane, inexcusable, and our leader nowhere to be found hypocrites. This is not going to stop as they are now coming from Africa and Asia and making their way to Mexico into the U S as Biden opened the borders. Biden is an idiot. Um, and then there's an article here from CNN. Now it's interesting to me, just an observation. That, uh, you know, Mike always talks about how CNN is ignoring the story and only Fox is covering it, which is not correct, as I've stated on the show. Uh, I don't actually watch CNN, but I listen to CNN sometimes when I'm in the car going somewhere on uh, satellite radio, Sirius XM satellite radio. They have a CNN channel, so I listen to CNN, and they're actually spending a lot of time uh, on uh, on this uh, issue. Uh, So here's what the article from CNN says. As the number of unaccompanied children in Border Patrol custody ballooned this month, President Joe Biden's team raced to find more places to house them, leaving thousands of children stuck in jail-like facilities for longer than the 72 hours allowed under the law. But the process of scouring government sites for adequate shelters was taking too long for Biden, who is now staring down a problem threatening to spiral out of control. A senior administration official who spoke on condition of anonymity to offer a candid assessment of the response said, quote, he was disappointed that we hadn't gotten answers from other agencies faster or that the facilities wouldn't be ready for children faster. He made it pretty clear that there were times when he didn't think we were moving fast enough, unquote. From its earliest weeks in office, the Biden administration has been playing catch up, scrambling to stem a growing immigration crisis on the U.S. southern border. Uh, where they are now more than 14,000 unaccompanied children in U.S. custody, officials said Thursday. Maybe Mike included the the, uh, link from CNN because he knew if it was Fox, I wouldn't read it because I don't trust Fox. (laughs) But uh, CNN has been covering this. Uh, By the way, Jenny is in the chat room. Hello, Jenny. And Brian Mackey says, LOL, I was eating ice cream and typing with one hand. Well, that's no reason to yell at us, Brian, please. No, I'm kidding. I get it. Um, Look, uh, I think the Biden administration on the border uh, is uh, doing an abysmal job, and I'm very disappointed. You know, I I always feel like Mike is—I think I've said that before, but I, I always feel like Mike assumes that I'm going to praise Biden on everything and dump on Trump on everything. Um, but I, I've said this before. Look, I give Biden an A plus on the pandemic response, and that to me is the number one issue above all else. So overall, uh, you know, I have more positive things than negative uh, to uh, to say about the Biden administration thus far. But as far as the border goes, I think there have been some missteps. I think that they were um, too quick. To be honest with you, and this might even surprise some of you to hear me say this, but um, I think they were too quick to change the policy. Uh, You know, Trump had the remain in Mexico policy, and I I think that they were too quick to change that. Now, I agree with Biden that if and this was something Jenny and I got into a disagreement about on the show. But I think when it comes to children, when it comes to unaccompanied minors, You have to let them in, and you have to do the best you can. Um, 
you know, we're America, we'll figure it out. And I, if, if that means that these kids, you know, are literally in cages while, while we try to figure out what to do with them, I'd rather that than they be starving to death on the other side of the border. Um, now, so I, I agree with Biden on that. And Biden did address that in the press conference that he did the other day, the press, uh, where, where he, not a single question about COVID, uh, from the media during that, which really surprised me, but, but there were a lot of questions to the media's credit, you know, the media, the so-called liberal media, they are holding the Biden administration accountable on this. They really are. Uh, CNN is covering it. MSNBC is covering it. It's not just Fox. And I, I hear a lot of criticism of the administration. Um, but I do agree with, you know, we're not going to turn away kids. Um, we need to be better than that. Um, but we also need to be doing a much better job of, and this should have been done out of the gate. This is where I'm critical of the Biden administration. Nothing should have changed, at least publicly, at least openly in terms of the messaging that got out there. Nothing should have changed um, in terms of policy until the Biden administration had worked directly with Mexico to try to figure out some way to solve this so that these kids aren't just crossing the Rio Grande and showing up at our border and then we have to take them in. Some way to, I mean, look, if if you want to continue to apply the Remain in Mexico policy to these kids, well, if there's a way we can work with Mexico to maybe hold some of these kids before we're ready to take them, hold them safely, and, you know, if that means putting them in a detention center, you know, that's not great. It's not great when it happens on our side of the border either, but at least keep them safe and keep them fed and you, you don't just let them starve to death. But, and there was a very interesting story. I I, I ran across this. The, the, the media hasn't been talking much about this, maybe because the Biden administration is sort of denying it or they were. I don't know if they still are, but there was a, a report that, there, there was some sort of uh, back-channel communication between the Biden administration and Mexico about, look, we're going to reach a point before too much longer where we're going to have, um, and I think this is very smart if this pans out, where we're actually going to have surplus of the vaccine when we reach that point where we have surplus and you need help, because it is in our interest to help once once we get everyone vaccinated who we possibly can, it is in our best interest to help other countries with vaccinations um, because we all share this planet and people move about the planet. And, you know, we're not truly safe until the planet is safe from COVID. So I think this makes sense, this strategy that is allegedly going on where we're going to help Mexico when the time comes with vaccinations in exchange for they're going to help us with this problem with everyone you know, traveling through Mexico to get here. And uh, because we need their help and, and it absolutely is a crisis. I know the administration won't acknowledge it's a crisis. Jen Psaki during a press briefing at one point did slip and <laughs> use the word crisis. So, which leads me to think that either she thinks that it is and just isn't supposed to say it, or there are internal discussions within the administration using that word, but they're not going to use that word publicly. Now, look, we see these surges and now, now I'm not on the, just blame it all on Biden train, which I'm sure is the train Mike Doyle would like me to get on and maybe even Tom Blanchard would like me to get on because um, this is not new. Uh, this problem goes back decades. We saw surges similar in number during the Trump administration, and Trump had a much tougher policy, obviously, as we know, on migrants coming here, refugees coming here, etc. And this was a problem under Trump. 
It was a problem under Obama. It was a problem under George W. Bush. It was a problem under Bill Clinton. I don't know further back than Bill Clinton how much of this was happening. I mean, obviously, you know, we've always had people crossing the border into the country illegally. But as far as um, people coming here seeking asylum. Um, but, yeah, they got to get a handle on this. And, you know, Biden mentioned during his press conference, he said that, you know, Part of this is seasonal and cyclical, and he's right. You see, during the colder months of the year, you see these surges happen because if you're going to cross the Rio Grande, especially if you're some 15-year-old kid who's been sent to cross by himself, or there was a 9-year-old apparently who turned up dead recently. Very, very sad. Um, You know, his family sent him by himself out of desperation. And let's, you know, if I may, call me a bleeding heart liberal if you want to, but I tend to want to inject some humanity and uh, empathy into these things. Um, You know, as Biden pointed out, people sending their children on this very dangerous trip, they're not doing it for the hell of it. They're doing it out of desperation, out of wanting their kids to have a chance at survival. That's how bad it is in some of these places like Guatemala, for example. So, um, but part of it is if, if, if you're going to make that journey, you want to do it during the winter when it's the coolest, you damn sure don't want to do it during the summer. So as we move into the warmer months, you're going to see this problem recede and then you'll see it kick back up again during the colder months. Um, so I think, I think the Biden administration, I think they adjusted the policy much too quickly. Tom Blanchard says, OMG, we can't save the world. You're right, but we can be America and at least try to do the bare minimum. And to me, this is my line in the sand. And, and, you know, again, Jenny and I debated this, but uh, and this is Biden's line in the sand, too, as he mentioned during his press briefing. And I agree with him. We're not going to let kids die of starvation on the other side of our border. We're just not going to do that. And we can figure it out. We're America. We can figure it out. We can figure out how not to let, you know, some kid who just crossed the Rio Grande by himself and then he finally gets to our border and we're just going to let him starve to death on the other side. No, we're not doing that. Sorry. We can do better than that. It's going to take time to figure it out, but we can do better than that. But I do agree the Biden administration has not handled this well so far and they need to get a hold of it. They need to get a hold of it, and it needs to be quick, and they do need to be actively working with Mexico to solve this. Um, So we'll see. Uh, A lot of uh, comments in the chat room, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll, uh, go through those, and then uh, I do want to try to get one more thing in. But um, let's see. What? Oh. Brian Mackey says, so uh, So, Mike Doyle, uh, why don't you uh, come up with a fix? <laughs> um, Brian says, I think they are doing the best they can. Uh, this is not a simple crisis. No, I mean, nothing about nothing about fixing the see, that's the thing we need. We need a lot of things to fix when it comes to immigration. And none of it is simple. But. People only want to speak of it in the simplest of terms. People only want to talk about building a wall or not building a wall, things like that. And it's so much more complicated than that, but nobody wants to deal with the details. You know, everyone everyone wants everything to be so easy. Tom says, I think he should not have announced that we will not turn any children away. Maybe. Maybe. You might be right, Tom, actually. You might be right. I mean, I, I don't think we should turn children away. Children who, who show, unaccompanied minors, in my opinion, should not be turned away. But yeah, you're right. You, you may be right. Maybe Biden shouldn't have said that out loud to the world. We will not turn children away. Uh, Melanie says, uh, and maybe the last administration, uh, shouldn't have cut the funding and support to the South American countries. Maybe immigration crisis could and would have developed differently. Well, that's, yeah, that's been part of the, um, ongoing discussion about this too, is 
do we need to be doing more, and we used to be doing more, and you're right, Melanie, now we do less, as far as helping these, uh, you know, as far as trying to solve the problem where the root of the problem is, and if we can help those countries, if we can find ways to help those countries where these people are coming from, so the people who are there don't feel a need to try to escape and come here, then that helps to solve the problem. That does get into some other discussions about, well, then we're helping other, you know, should we really be helping other countries uh, when we have our own problems here to fix? Then we get into that. But at the same time, it seems like in this case, if we are helping other countries, then uh, we are helping ourselves ultimately. Um. <laughs> Scott Robinson, who is a top fan, says, uh, Matt, when is Mexico paying for the wall anyway? Well, you'd have to ask our former president, Donald Trump, about that. Uh, Maybe they just haven't gotten the invoice yet. You know, uh, some of Trump's policies did slow down, uh, you know, or that uh, uh, postmaster general there he installed, uh, DeJoy. Uh, They kind of slowed down the pace of the mail. So maybe they just haven't received the invoice in the mail. So hopefully they'll pay it soon. Uh, Bobby said, I do agree with letting 13-year-olds and younger in. Uh, Let's see. Bobby says, no wall, no problem. Well, or with a question mark. Um, But yeah, I mean, you know, if if Mike or anyone is looking for me to, to argue with you about, you know, that I think the Biden administration's done a great job, no, not on this. I don't. I think on this, they are spectacularly failing, and they need to figure it out quickly. Um, We are almost out of time. Uh, Let me give the number again quickly if anyone wants to get in with a call. 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. Let's see if we can get in one or two quick things, though. Uh, Matt Gates of Florida. You know, it, it's it's interesting how quickly he is able to move through a news cycle. Yesterday or the day before, the big news about Matt Gates was that he was considering uh, resigning from Congress because he might take a job with Newsmax. <laughs> and then uh, the news about Matt Gates uh, the next day was um, he may be in trouble uh, for a dalliance. Uh, or an, an attempt at such with an underage girl, which is uh, never a good look. And then I see this on Mediaite. Gates's father speaks out, says he told the FBI he was willing to wear a wire. Now, I didn't get a chance to pre-read this at all. I just saw it pop up on Mediaite, which is one of my favorite websites. And I said, I need to look at this. So it says here, Congressman Matt Gates is under investigation by the Department of Justice for, per a New York Times report that broke Tuesday, quote, yesterday, quote, over whether he had a sexual relationship with a 17-year-old and paid for her to travel with him, unquote. He claimed that his family has been targeted by an extortion scheme and they went to the FBI, which had his father wear a wire? His father, former Florida State Senate President Don uh, Gates, spoke to Politico and said he has been working with the FBI. The elder Gates said he was going to wear a wire and meet with one individual involved in this alleged plot on Wednesday, but that fell apart after news of the DOJ investigation broke. He told Politico he met with David McGee, a former DOJ official, earlier this month and wore a wire. Quote, the FBI asked me to try and get that information for Matt and an indication we would transfer money to Mr. David McGee, unquote. This is all very strange. McGee, who was first named by the younger Gates in his Fox News interview Tuesday night, denied the allegations of extortion in a statement to the Daily Beast. Politico's report said the congressman's office provided emails where, quote, Don Gates' cooperation with the FBI was discussed and confirmed, unquote. The elder Gates claimed that while he told the FBI, quote, I'm willing to wear a wire and be cooperative, uh, he was, quote, asked to say things that are not true to draw out an admission, unquote. The investigation was opened under Bill Barr, and the report says the former attorney general was briefed multiple times on the matter. 
So then uh, this is from the uh, Daily Beast story. It says, The briefings were consistent with Barr's memo requiring notification to department leadership on probes of candidates. The briefing was important because, among other reasons, Barr didn't want to accidentally appear anywhere with Gates, the person said. At one point, Barr was scheduled for a meet and greet with Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee, but DOJ canceled his appearance at the event when they saw that Gates, a member of that committee, had RSVP'd for it. Wow, this is just uh, getting uh, curiouser and curiouser. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're almost out of time. Um, do we have time for, yeah, yeah, we really don't have time to get into uh, anything. Wow. What a strange picture of, uh, what a strange picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger I'm looking at. That doesn't look like him. Oh my God. I, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at. So this story popped up on Mediaite. Arnold Schwarzenegger dismisses Gavin Newsom's ludicrous claim that Republicans are behind his recall. Schwarzenegger is just so strange looking. There is he. He must have had some bad plastic surgery. He just looks very weird. Um. Okay. Well, we do need to begin to wrap up. I do want to remind you uh, tomorrow. Uh, We will be joined in the second hour, uh, I'm sorry, not in the second hour, I think at 4.30, uh, by a Mr. Easy G, Eric Gagnon, or I think as they say uh, in France, uh, Gagnon, for his entertainment report. Isn't that exciting? Uh, Tomorrow, of course, uh, April 1st, oh, it'll be April Fool's Day, 2021. Uh, So we look forward to that. Sorry if I seem distracted. I was just trying to figure something out. Hmm. Okay. I guess that's right. Sorry, everybody. Anyway, occasionally the uh, the old ADD kicks in a little bit. So uh, with that, we will uh, bid you all a fond farewell. Uh, maybe I'll play a little bit of that again. Um, yeah, I think I will. Um But, uh, yeah, so we'll be back tomorrow. EZG will be with us for his entertainment report. And if you missed any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at mattconnerton.com and, of course, at wmnhradio.org. That has been updated, if you didn't hear already. So uh, all the shows are up there now. And um, other than that, oh, and thank you again to to Mike Lopez, Alderman, like, (coughs) excuse me, Alderman, Mike Lopez for calling in and uh, Alex and Joyce as well to talk about boys state and girls state. And um, yeah, other than that, I, uh, that'll do it for us. Thank you all. Oh, and thank you to Tony D for calling earlier as well. And uh, don't forget if you haven't done it already, vaccinations opened up today for 30 and up here in the great state of New Hampshire. All right. That is it for me for now. I will talk at y'all a little bit later. Bye.